As we learn more about the suspect in this gruesome case, we want to bring in ABC contributor Brad Garrett, who was a hostage negotiator and profiler for the FBI for 17 years. Hey, Brad, thank you so much for joining us. So much of Koberger's education has come into focus after he was named a suspect. He received a bachelor's degree from DeSales University, completed a graduate studies there, and just ended his first semester as a PhD student of criminology at Washington State. You hold a PhD in criminology yourself. Explain to us, if you would, what you learn in that kind of program. So you learn a lot about the psyche of people who commit crime. What, you know, obviously, Lindsay, there's multiple uh, indicators or motivators of why people do domestic violence, why they commit robberies, uh, why they commit mass murder uh, or s serial murder. And so you sort of get into the heads of all those people. You also learn about crime scenes, about what to look for. Uh, and you get a real indicator about how the whole system works, basically, how police investigate cases, et cetera, because your job, once you leave graduate school, is to be the person that can look at crimes and figure out what happened and why it happened. How could this knowledge that Koberger held, a deep understanding of crime scenes and knowledge of how the system works, how could that all factor into the prosecutor's case against him? Uh, well, first of all, they could say that he has a big interest in crime. Well, obviously, if this is what you study, if you're a doctor and you, you, you are a pulmonary specialist, you look at that stuff all the time. So I, I suppose he could use that. Uh, my sense would be the following, is that this suspect is different than most homicide offenders. In other words, the typical murder is driven by rage, jealousy, greed, uh, you know, the domestic, whatever it might be. Um, but it's, it's not psychologically driven. Serial killers, and I'm not suggesting this, this guy is a serial killer, but serial killers are driven by the satisfaction and the puzzle and the excitement and the risk of killing people. This crime early on sort of struck me of all of those variables. Uh, in particular, when they didn't come up with a suspect that was apparently in sort of, uh, of a relationship of some fort, of some part, with the, with the suspect. It, sources tell ABC that the police found Koberger through DNA found at the scene. The DNA was uploaded to a public genealogy database. Investigators found relatives, and that, that led them to, to Koberger. How common is it to link suspects to genealogy sites? Well, it's becoming more and more common. I mean, if you go back, I suppose the most recent well-known case would be the Golden State Killer. And he got linked 30 years plus after he apparently stopped killing people uh, through, through genetic genealogy, you know, which, as you may well know, are public databases. You sign up basically doing ancestral stuff on your own background to figure out relatives, et cetera, where you came from. Well, police have figured out that they can use that same database to maybe locate an offender. So what happens is you have a DNA profile, but you don't know who it goes to. So you plug into maybe more than one database, and you get a partial hit. That's my term. They probably don't use that term, but a partial hit would be that there is some genetic connection to a person they have found in this, in this database. And then they build off of that until they finally work their way down through looking at multiple records, death records, birth records, uh, all sorts of things to get you down to, can we actually find the, the actual maybe parents or brother of the victim or of the suspect, I'm sorry. And so I think that's what happened. Some version of that's what happened. And that's why they were able to link him up to his obvious DNA left at the scene. In the weeks leading up to Koberger's arrest, police were zeroing in on a white Elantra, saying that they believe someone inside had crucial information. Koberger drove a white Elantra and even drove it across country with his father in mid-December. What is your thought about that trip? It, we know that the dad flew out to his son, and then they drove mm. all the way back to Pennsylvania in that Elantra. Well, yes, there was information about an Elantra, and I, I do believe the police thought that this could be the bad guy's car. It was near the house, apparently, according to them, 
It was caught on a camera in a very fuzzy picture leaving the town. And so uh, th I think they felt there was some comfort and connection. They didn't have a tag number. You know, Hyundai Elantras are not high volume, but there are several thousand of them in the United States in, in that year period of, of 2011 to 2013. So I think they're grappling. So once, you know, you don't know what came first. I'm going to guess maybe the DNA came first. Then you figure it out. You can't just tell the entire United States law enforcement people, go find a white Elantra. You'd have to have more information, like a tag number, obviously, or something really unique about the car. And you'd have to say it's wanted in a possible homicide in, in Moscow, Idaho. They didn't have, my sense would be, maybe by the middle of December, they didn't have all that together. And so as a result, father flies out and they drive across the country. Brad Garrett, thank you so much for your time and insight as always. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.